Finally, AMD has released a high-end graphics card for laptops, that is Radeon RX 17900M. And in this video, I would like to have a look at its specifications, performance, price and power efficiency. But first, CDKeyOffer.com has been my favorite trusted seller of affordable Windows 10 Pro OEM keys for over three years now. They're currently running a Halloween sale on all Microsoft software. Use discount code IVADIM to get 25% off and bring the Windows 10 Pro price down to just $16. Then securely check out with PayPal or another payment method. The key is delivered instantly, so you can activate it and upgrade to Windows 11 for free if you wish to do so. Microsoft Office 2019 and 2021 Pro are also on sale with a discount code IVADIM. Grab them now while the Halloween sale is on. Let's start with taking a look at the specifications of the RX 17900M. It comes with 72 compute units, just for comparison, RX 7800 XT, the desktop GPU, has 60 compute units, so I expect this graphics card to be comparable in terms of performance to that one. And, um, well, we'll only see that if someone actually compares this laptop to a desktop. But this graphics card is designed to compete with RTX 4080 laptop graphics cards. The boost clock is, well, we'll round it up, 2.1 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of memory, and that is 18 gigabit per second GDDR6 memory. It comes with AMD Infinite Cache, 64 megabytes of it, and it supports AV1 encoding and decoding, which is always nice to see. Total graphics power up to 180 watts. The only laptop currently available with this graphics card is Alienware M18. And um, with their version of like Turbo Boost, uh, this GPU actually ramps up to 200 watts. And the price is $2,800. So that is the starting price. And for that, you get a 16-core uh, Ryzen 9 7945HX. 79 Just for comparison, the same laptop, same model, with an RTX 4080, is available for uh, $2,750. But there's a caveat. It's not that uh, AMD laptop is more expensive. It's just that this NVIDIA laptop comes with an inferior CPU, which is a 12-core instead of a 16-core. Unfortunately, uh, Alienware Configurator doesn't allow us to select the same CPU. So in reality, RTX 4080 laptops are supposed to be a little bit more expensive compared to the RX 7900M. In case you're interested in how this laptop looks like, it's an 18-inch laptop. That is the only model that this GPU is currently available in. Uh, I hope that we will see more OEMs and more models released. For example, the cheaper Lenovo models, that would be nice. But at the moment, this is the only laptop this GPU is available in. Looks pretty nice. Moving on to the performance. Unfortunately, we don't have any independent reviews just yet. So we are going to take a look at the official AMD slides. AMD claims that on average, the RX 7900M is 7% 7 faster than the RTX 4080. We all know that Nvidia has superior ray tracing performance, but surprisingly, this graphics card is outperforming the RTX 4080 in Far Cry 6 in the ray tracing mode. Resident Evil 4 and Dead Space RT is also 5% faster on the RX 7900M. Forspoken, 2% faster. However, other games such as Metro Exodus, The Callisto Protocol, Doom Eternal, F1 2022, Spider-Man Miles Morales, as well as Forza Horizon 5, all are performing worse with ray tracing on. Although it is worth noting that it is still performing quite well at 1440p, offering playable experiences with Forza Horizon 5 79 FPS average, Spider-Man 85 FPS average, F1 2022 62, 
The only one I would adjust the settings on is the Callisto protocol. You know, it is maximum settings, so drop those down a little bit and it will be good to go. With ray tracing disabled in Cyberpunk 2077, the RX 17900M offers 88 FPS average, which is 38% higher than the RTX 4080. Hogwarts Legacy, 94 FPS average, Spider-Man Miles Morales, 136 FPS, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, 112 FPS, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, 121 FPS at 1440p. So to me, the RX 7900M does look like a capable GPU for 1440p gaming, and the fact that it comes in a laptop package is amazing. However, I still want to see independent reviews confirm these performance claims, because when it comes to laptop GPU performance, it depends on the TDP quite a lot. So you can take like a 180 watt laptop and compare it to a 100 watt laptop, uh, the results will be quite different because, for example, the RTX 4080 laptop GPU is capable of being configured all the way down from 60 watts all the way up to 150 watts TDP. And the performance in those two laptops will be drastically different. There's just one concern that I have about the RX 7900M laptops, and that is power efficiency. As we have seen from desktop GPUs, our DNA 3 is not the most power efficient architecture, so it is important to take a look at the power efficiency first before making a final judgment of RX 7900M versus the RTX 4080, because it might not be a very good option for those of you who are looking to work on the go with a battery intact and not just have like a three hour battery life. My educated guess would be that the RTX 4080 laptops will be more power efficient than the RX 7900M. However, the fact that they do come with just 12 gigabytes of video memory, it really bothers me because, come on, it's 2023 and in the high-end laptop, we need at least 16 gigabytes of memory. And buying this nearly $3,000 laptop, you know, a couple of years down the line, I would regret getting a 12 gig version. So for now, AMD's RX 7900M laptop to me looks like a better deal because it has 16 gigabytes of memory instead of 12 on the RTX 4080 laptops. Let me know what do you think about video memory capacity? Do you need a lot of VRAM or are you okay with 12 gigabytes? Let me know your thoughts about all this in the comment section below. I will be reading those and replying, so let's have a chat there. And check out these two videos next if you're interested in learning more about the forthcoming PC hardware. It was I, Vadim, until next time.